Welcome to the track development and simulation department. We are a team of five people working with the big picture of the coasters, um, doing the layout development up from, from initial concepts up to the, the final product of the, the tracks. This is the ride to happiness. This is one of the second extreme spinning coaster that we've built. It's a dual launch coaster with spinning trains or spinning coaches. So we initially get contacted by the customer. In this case, the client um, already knew which kind of um, ride they wanted. They wanted um, an extreme spinning coaster. Then what we actually did, because Plopsaland de Pana isn't too far away from here, uh, I got into a car with our um, sales representative, uh, Thorsten Köbele, and we drove up there. We went through the park and see what kind of terrain we were going to work with, uh, what kind of sweet spots or viewing angles the ride should have. Then we decided on the position of the station, where the launches should go, etc. And then basically sketched some ideas on a sheet of paper. We wanted to get a good mix of airtime elements and inversions in here. We wanted to show all the strengths of a inverting um, spinning coaster. Significant portions of the track layout are above a lake. That's something that we had to keep in mind that all the foundations had to be poured in, in winter times when the lake uh, was actually dried up. We have interactions with an existing ride, the Super Splash. The client was very happy with the, with the layout and we basically lock the layout, freeze the layout and the statics department starts to calculate the columns, um, the track and everything else. So the layout starts with a curved Jojo roll out of the station. Uh, that's why the station is elevated. Then goes into a standstill, launches up to 25 meters per second, almost vertically into the top head, which has an outer bank turn into an almost vertical drop, into the world's first banana roll for a spinning coaster, vertical loop thrown in there, just because that's such a classical element and going sideways through it is, is amazing. Zero G roll as well, an S turn into airtime launch two, into one and a half zero G rolls-ish into a half loop, which we call double inverting dive loop, an airtime hill with minus one Gs and two bunny hops into the final break. So obviously Time Traveler was the prototype and we erred on the side of caution. We didn't know exactly how the train looks during track development because those two processes were in parallel, development of the train and the track layout. So you have to give yourself some wiggle room in prototyping. For the ride to happiness, we knew exactly what the train looks like and how much it weighs, etc. So we could push the limits a little bit further. Having ridden Time Traveler, you know which kind of effects work, which kind of elements you can push the limits a little bit more than on others. The first drop from Time Traveler was something that we wanted to incorporate here as well, with the problem that you don't have the, this kind of terrain interaction here in, in Belgium. That's why we did this wacky top hat style element, just to get the feeling of getting dropped uh, from a relatively slow velocity. One element really struck me because that one turned just at the apex of this airtime hill. Depending on the rotation of the coach, you really get flung out of the, the seat just due to the rotation of the track underneath. I sort of expected that to happen, but not, not quite in this way. Not a lot of people get sick on this ride which is surprising because it's a really intense ride. Maybe this shows that this isn't really the limit for the extreme spinning coasters. I thought this was pretty much the limit, but maybe it isn't. I've seen 70 year old people in there and they are having fun. I think at some point the first chain lift extreme spinning coaster will be a thing. And maybe also an extreme spinning coaster with only one launch because 
at that point the, the launch exit speed is, is higher than, than before. More wacky elements, more disorienting elements. That's something we definitely have to focus on on this type of coaster. Obviously it's always a team effort, but you have an intimate relationship with the layouts. Visiting the park years before a project starts, seeing the area where the coaster is planned, and then three years later driving to the same park and the coaster is there, just as you imagined. When I first wrote The Right to Happiness, it's a really weird feeling because I've written it on my desk, desk here uh, thousands of times and I knew exactly what, what's going to happen. Obviously it's something else to really sit in there and feel it physically, but you can't describe that, that feeling.